Welcome back to another episode here on Sean's Take. On Tuesday, October 30th, the NFL trade deadline came and went. We saw many teams make big moves as they prepare for a run at the postseason. I'm going to give you a rundown of the most important trades and what you should expect moving forward. The first trade we have is the Denver Broncos trade wide receiver Demarius Thomas and a seventh round pick to the Houston Texans for a fourth and seventh round pick. The Texans recently saw wide receiver Will Fuller tear his ACL and he's now out for the season. This is the same injury that took Deshaun Watson out last year. In an effort not to live in the past, Houston decided to grab Demarius Thomas off the trade market. They hope that he will be able to come in and replace Will Fuller's production. While Thomas and Fuller are not the same receiver, Demarius Thomas will offer a great one-two punch along with DeAndre Hopkins in Houston. Look for Houston's offense to stay strong even with Will Fuller out. Demarius Thomas should be able to help the Texans make a run at the postseason. Why this trade also makes sense for the Denver Broncos is they simply don't see Demarius Thomas as part of their future. He's getting older and the Broncos drafted wide receiver Cortland Sutton in this past draft. They believe Sutton has the talent to be a number one receiver one day and getting rid of Thomas opens up targets and more playing time for their young receiver. In our next trade we have the Detroit Lions trade wide receiver Golden Tate to the Philadelphia Eagles for a third round pick. Golden Tate's in a contract year and the Lions didn't feel like he was part of their, their future. They have wide receiver Marvin Jones and a young stud receiver Kenny Galladay who the franchise is really high on. So they sent Golden Tate to the Eagles who recently lost Jay Ajahi for the season. The Eagles were looking to replace Ajahi with another running back but after calling the Buffalo Bills about LaShawn McCoy, they realized his price tag was way too high and they didn't want to take a risk on the uncertainty that would come with trading for Le'Veon Bell from the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the Eagles looked elsewhere to replace Ajahi's production. They found Golden Tate and realized that he could help their passing attack that's already been strong with Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar, and Zach Ertz. Tate will now be Carson Wentz's new best friend and he'll serve as underneath routes and checkdowns and be able to catch the ball in space and get yards after catch. The Eagles are now looking good with their passing attack and as long as they can keep a stable run game and play defense, the Eagles may be looking to get back into the postseason race in what would be another Super Bowl effort for Philadelphia. Up next we have the Los Angeles Rams send a third and fifth round draft pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars in return for defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. Dante Fowler hasn't gotten off to the NFL career many expected he would after being drafted early in the first round by the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got lost in a crowded Jacksonville defensive line, and that's made him expendable for the Jaguars. The Rams, who are all in on a Super Bowl this year, have been looking for a pass rusher on the trade market. They already have a strong D-line anchored by Aaron Donald and Ndama Kinsu, but they've been looking for some edge pressure. Fowler will come in and be a pass rushing specialist for them, and they hope that, he'll, that his ability to get after the quarterback may be the missing piece to a Super Bowl run in Los Angeles. On to our next trade we have the Green Bay Packers send safety HaHa -Ha Quentin Dix to the Washington Redskins for a fourth round pick. For the Packers, I don't understand this trade. They're trading away one of their best and most consistent defensive players. The Packers have one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Aaron Rodgers, and they're never counted out of a postseason run. This move essentially looks like a rebuilding move, which the Packers are in no position to do while Aaron Rodgers is in his prime. This move will hurt their defense and make it even harder for Rodgers to lead them to the postseason. For the Redskins, I love the trade. The Redskins sit in a playoff hunt alongside the Philadelphia Eagles and Dallas Cowboys. The Redskins' defense has been playing well for the majority of the season, and if Quentin Dix can be the missing part to their secondary, their defensive unit could be looking really good in the upcoming weeks. This move could help the Redskins win the division, and it'll take some pressure off of their offense, which likes to manage games and control the clock. If the Redskins are able to do that, their offense won't need to score as many points, and it can allow them to get another postseason berth. In our last trade of the day, we have a trade that took place a little bit before the trade deadline happened, when we saw the Dallas Cowboys send a first round pick to the Oakland Raiders in exchange for wide receiver Amari Cooper. 
Ever since Des Bryant left, the Cowboys have been looking for a number one receiver. They hope that Amari Cooper, who had a very strong first couple seasons in the league, can morph into that number one role. For the Raiders, they traded away Khalil Mack before the season started. They're obviously entering a rebuild right now, and Cooper hadn't been fitting the offense that John Gruden installed. So the Raiders looked to see what they could get, and getting a first round pick for Amari Cooper may turn out to be a great trade for Oakland. Cooper didn't fit the system, and this first round pick gives the Raiders three first rounders in next year's draft. It's a great start to a rebuild in Oakland, and we'll see how these rookies turn out for them, but getting rid of Cooper right now for this value was a great deal for the Raiders. As far as the Cowboys go, I think trading away a first round pick was too high for Amari Cooper. He's immense talent, but he's shown that in the right system, he may be a great player, but if you don't surround him with the right talent or the right play calling, he can disappear in games often. However, the Cowboys hope that Cooper can be that number one guy for them, and if he turns out to be that, the first round pick will be justified. Yet, if Cooper can't, then this trade is going to be bad for the Cowboys as they lose another asset in the future. Amari Cooper needs to step up in, in Dallas and prove that he's the receiver that everyone thought he was coming out of Alabama. Thanks for watching this episode. I'll be coming out with more articles and videos soon, while also keeping you guys up to date with the latest news on social media. Thanks for watching.